Praise God. Praise God. So today we are going to look at a, a very interesting topic. I believe it's a topic that uh, not a lot of people like to discuss about. But we should know the truth. The truth is, the same way we are born into this world, one day we have to leave this world. There is something called death, a reality that all of us have to face. And uh, back in the days when I was in the in our previous ministry, we used to conduct, uh, I was sent quite often to conduct funeral services. So then um, I could see on the faces of people, especially for those of them who doesn't know Jesus, they are lost because they have different, different things and ideas in their minds about death and what happens to them after they close their eyes for good. But for us, as children of God, we as God's children, there is something different that God has for us. So today we are going to look at what death really is. It's not going to be a long message. It's going to be a very short message. And after that, we are going to go into a time of discussion. So let me ask this question from you. Have you given thought about this topic, about death? What does it mean to you? Let me tell you my favorite verse in the Bible. No? Now, every time I say this, you know, I get scolded by my wife or sometimes she says, you know what, you really want to die anytime soon? I say, no, no, that's not what I'm saying. This is what the Bible says. So it's Philippians 1.21. Paul says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. That's one of my favorite verses. Because for us as children of God, the truth is the time we live on earth for us to live is Christ. We experience Christ. We experience the goodness of the Lord. And death is nothing other than only a gain for us. Hallelujah. Always remember that. So hope beyond the grave is our topic for today. There is hope beyond the grave. What an amazing thing, a privilege to know that there is hope beyond the grave. Now I can remember, you know, <laughs> just as I begin this topic, I'm remembering the times we used to conduct funeral services back in the days. There's hope in the grave. I used to stand before the, the, creme uh, the cremating place and I used to you know, boldly say with, one, with my Bible in my left hand, beloved, there is hope in the grave. And I say that because I mean, because that's what we find in the word of God. For you and I, there is hope beyond the grave. And for those of these precious innocent people out there who doesn't know Jesus. This is why we have to share the gospel. Unless they come to know Jesus, they will not have hope beyond the grave. We have been saved. Now you and I, as children of God, not only that we have been saved, it's not only that we live a, a powerful life in Christ, not only do we have the precious Holy Spirit within us, but also we have hope beyond the grave. Amen. So what is death for a child of God? For a child of God, what is death? Like I said, it is a gain. It's never a loss. That's what we see in Philippians chapter 1, verse 21. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Maybe if you speak to 10 people, 7 out of 10 will tell you that they have no clue about what's going to happen to them after they die. A lot of people are under the impression that death is where everything comes to an end. But for us, death is only a gain. It's never a loss. It's a start and it's not the end. Remember, John chapter 5, verse 24, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that hears my word and believes on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Hallelujah. We are a privileged chosen of people who know the Lord, who has accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, who will experience life after death. What is this life that we are going to experience after death is eternal life. 
We have already received it by accepting Jesus into our life as our Lord and our Savior. And this reality is what we are going to live, start living the moment we close our eyes for good on earth. Hallelujah. Then, what is death? Let me put it this way. In today's context, what is really death? The Bible says death is a temporary sleep. Death is a temporary sleep. The Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse number 14, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Hallelujah. And while you know, sharing from 1 Thessalonians, I remember something funny that happened long time, long years ago. You know, the first uh, time I led worship, the first time I shared a message was at a funeral service. I was on my way to conduct, actually, uh, I was going with my previous pastor, Pastor Raja Solomon. We were on our way to conduct, uh, he was, actually, he was on his way to conduct a funeral service. He took me also. And then. So while we were on our way, he said, Bimal, I heard that you can play the guitar. Why don't you lead worship? So I said, Pastor, I have no clue about leading worship, but I'll give it a try. And when we went there, just before he was about to start the message, he turned to me and said, Bimal, I think most of the people here, they might not understand English. So why don't you translate my message into Sinhala? Because I can't speak, speak preach in Sinhala. So that was the first time I translated a message into Sinhala, an English message into Sinhala. And for the way I was doing it at that time, I thought even the cops might get up thinking because of the, the revelation that I'm giving through my bad Sinhala. So that's something funny I just remember that happened. So remember, it's a temporary sleep. Bible says that death is only a sleep. It's a temporary sleep. And what happens to those who are in this temporary sleep? So now our precious brothers and sisters who were on this earth, who have gone to be with the Lord, when we say that they have gone to be with the Lord, they are in this state of the temporary sleep. They are in a temporary sleep. So what is going to happen to those who are in this temporary sleep? The Bible says that they will rise when Jesus returns to rapture his church. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse number 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Now this is about the rapture. With the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, the dead in Christ shall rise first. This is what's going to happen. For those who are in this state, where they are in this temporary sleep, what's going to happen is they are going to rise when the trumpet sounds and when Jesus is coming back to rapture his beautiful bride on earth, this is what's going to happen. Those who are in this temporary sleep, they are going to rise first. Then, what should a Christian's attitude be towards death? What should our attitude be towards death? First of all, we should not have any fear because death can not separate us from God's love. That's what Romans chapter 8 verse number 38 says. And because of this, because we can't be separated from the love of God, we should have no fear of death. Now let me tell you what Romans 8 38 uh, onwards says. It starts off, Paul starts off by saying, neither death no life, no principalities, no powers, no angels, no things in the presence, no uh, present, no things that are yet to come. No height, no death, no any other creature can separate us from the love of God. And I'm amazed because Paul, here he starts this explanation with death. He says, neither death can separate you from the love of God. So because of that, we as children of God, we must not have any fear of death. Then, Know that anyone who may try to harm you can never touch your soul. This is what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. Do not fear them which can only kill or destroy the body, but they are not able to kill the soul. But rather, fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Hallelujah. So this is what our attitude should be as a child of God. Do not fear death because death is not only a king. Philippians 1.21, like we looked at a little before, a little while ago. Death is only a gain for us. It's never a loss. So don't live with the fear of death. 
because death is only a game. Hallelujah. And with that, I pray that the Holy Spirit will remind us the individual and the collective responsibility that all of us have in preaching the word of God and sharing the word of God. Why? Remember, those who are out there who are lost, who don't have Jesus with them, they have no eternal life. Eternal life is only found in Jesus. Just like Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 6, that he is the only way, the truth, and life. No one can access the Father other than going through Jesus. So we have a, a great responsibility in us to share the word of God, to share the gospel, so that the lost will come to know Jesus. Today we have the blessed assurance, God has really blessed our hearts today because we know that one day when we close our eyes for good on earth, we are not going to be, you know, in hell. It's a victory for us. It's a gain for us. So the same gain that we have is something that we should have, we should desire for others also to have. Hallelujah. And with this, let's go into our time of discussion and I'll show you the three areas that we are going to be discussing about. First of all, how important are Jesus's words to you when he said this in the garden of Gethsemane? Jesus said in John chapter 17, verse four, now John chapter 17 is where you will find Jesus praying in the garden of Gethsemane. He says, I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you gave me to do. These two sentences, I have glorified you on the earth. And I have finished the work which you gave me to do, Lord. How important are these words to you? How do you personalize this into your life? Then, how well do you want to finish your race? The Bible tells us that we must finish our race on earth meaningfully. So how well do you want to finish your race? And the third question that we are going to discuss is, how do you want to be remembered on earth after you are no longer here? Once you get promoted to greater glory in the Lord, how do you want to be remembered by the people on earth who knew you? So with this, let's go into a time of discussion and God bless you, God bless you. <laughs>